In this video, we're going to learn to explore a data set using some of the tools that are available to us in SPSS. Um, as I mentioned in the lectures, uh, that during the summer I've uh, been regularly cycling, and, and so I posed the research question, uh, have I become a fast cyclist? And to answer this, we're going to look at some of the velocity data that's captured by my smartphone. Um, and we're going to look at data that's captured at the beginning of that period of riding, um, at the beginning of the summer, and uh, a more recent ride uh, that's uh, captured at the end of the summer. The corresponding data files are named ride1.sav and ride2.sav, and these can be downloaded either from my blog or from the QM Plus uh, website. So first uh, I've got the ride1.sav file open in SPSS and you can see that here. So it's uh, this file here, opening SPSS. And you'll see that there are two views available. Uh, we have what's called the variable view and the data view. So I'm looking at this in the variable view at the moment. And so in the variable view, you can see that I've defined the, the input data as um, the name of the variable elapsed seconds. And now I've labeled that to actually explain what it is. So it's the time elapsed from the start of a ride in seconds. And this is a scale measure because time is measured on a continuous scale. Uh, similarly, I have uh, defined a variable called velocity, and this is simply, uh, again, I've labelled this, it's simply my velocity or speed measured in miles per hour at each of these time points. And again, velocity is measured on a continuous scale. And then I have defined this third variable called ride. And then I've labelled that just for some clarification. That's the ride number. And what I mean there is the ride number, well, the first one that I did was ride number one, and uh, going up sequentially up to the last ride, which is, say, ride number five, or something like that. Uh, and this is ordinal, because that number means something. The order of those uh, numbers means something. Um, so ride one comes before ride number two. However, they're not on a continuous scale. So uh, I could have done ride one um, one day and then ride two the next day. But then perhaps I waited a week before doing ride number three, and maybe then two days before ride number four, or something like that. So th the distance between those uh, rides is, is not um, equal, but the order is important, and hence it's an ordinal variable. So then if we go into the data view, we can see that I have three columns. And so each of these columns corresponds to the, um, the elapsed uh, seconds variable, the velocity variable, and the ride variable. And so under elapsed seconds, I have each time point. So this is 15, anything here is 15 seconds after the start of the ride. And at that point, my velocity was 17.56 miles per hour. And now all of these data points correspond to ride number one. Now, what is useful to do when we, we have experimental data like this is sometimes we just want to visualize it so that we can begin to understand what it is that we're dealing with. Uh, so, in SPSS, the simplest way of doing this is to draw a graph. And we've got two variables of interest, we've got velocity and we've got uh, elapsed seconds. So, let's create a graph that plots velocity um, in relation to the elapsed time. So, we get to the graphs menu and then select the chart builder. 
and we get this box pop up. Now this is um, uh, used for creating all sorts of graphs uh, and the, the things to look at here are that we have our variables sitting up here so we have a list of the variables that we can choose from for plotting and then we have a gallery and the gallery just lists different types of graph that we might like to um, produce and so what we're going to do we're going to select um, a line line graph and so I just want this one because that's a single line when you've got a single line that we want to draw and then you get to choose what you want to put on the x-axis and what you want to put on the y-axis now I'm uh, going to go with convention and I'm going to put time on the x-axis so you just pick it up and drag it across and likewise with velocity so there we go I pick it up and drag it across and then I can just press OK just clear the screen and so SPSS will do a little bit of processing and then produce this plot and here we can see that we've got velocity plotted as a function of time and you'll notice that the labels here on the graph axes are the same as the labels that we put in to the variable view in SPSS now there's a few things that are interesting on this, this plot uh, the first thing we notice is that the velocity frequently drops down to either very low with small values sub 5 miles per hour and sometimes even down to zero and I suspect that if we were to zoom in on some of these they would indeed drop down to zero The other thing to notice is we seem to have, sometimes the speed just seems to drop down to around the 10 miles per hour region, uh, which is interesting. Now, I'd suggest that when the speed comes down here to uh, zero, perhaps that's stopping at traffic lights. But then this 10 miles per hour, now I know because I'm the one riding the bike, that frequently I get caught in traffic. And when I'm in slow moving traffic, you tend to move at around uh, 10 miles per hour. And so actually, when I want to know if I've got any faster as a cyclist, well, I'm always going to get caught at traffic lights and I'm probably always going to get caught in traffic and the traffic's not going to move any faster the fitter that I get uh, and the traffic lights aren't going to um, change any less frequently the uh, fitter I get so actually perhaps this information these um, points on the graph are actually skewing the data um, away from the thing that I want to find out because I'm actually interested perhaps in this line here where really that's where my cruising speed is that's where I want, I'm interested to know whether that's changing at all and so what we can do is we can actually visualise this data in a different way so why don't we produce a histogram which tells me uh, how frequently certain numbers recur so if we were to produce a histogram of the velocity I could see how often different velocities or different speeds um, occur in the data so going back to graphs and the chart builder this time I can go into the gallery and select histogram and under the histogram I have a, a number of choices 
Uh, the one that I'm interested in is this one because that's just for a single data set. And now if I drag that, data, that uh, histogram onto the chart area, uh, it replaces the line graph. Now you'll also see that on the x-axis I've still got the time elapsed from start. Now I don't want a histogram of the elapsed time. What I want is a histogram of velocity. So all we do is we just get, grab the velocity and drag it down onto the x-axis. We've already got histogram on the y-axis, so I simply press OK, and SPSS will produce a histogram. Do a little bit of processing, and there we go. And so now we have the data uh, represented um, in a very concise way. So here we can see that, yes, we've got a few values that go down to zero. And in fact, we can, we can see clearly that, um, that there's a real tail down to zero where these lower speeds are. And so we've got the deceleration, the acceleration, and the stopping. We've also got this clustering around 10 miles per hour, which I proposed was due to having to sit in traffic. But we have this main peak, this mode, the most often recurring um, value, that occurs around 20 miles per hour. Uh, and perhaps this is the area that I'm really interested in. I'm interested to know whether I can push this peak, um, or if this peak has moved uh, from the original rides to more recent rides. There's something else to notice here. Above 30 miles per hour, we seem to have some uh, data points. And now, I know, much as I'd like to be able to say that I ride over 40 miles an hour, I know that's not true. I don't get over there. And I suspect this is um, a GPS error. So as my phone's recording my position, as I go through the city of London, I think the signal possibly reflects off the buildings and um, gives a, an erroneous uh, GPS reading. And so as my uh, position moves around, the phone calculates that I would have to be going over 40 miles an hour to maintain all of those positions, where indeed I was probably actually going at 10 miles per hour. So potentially we're not interested in any of this and only really interested in this central peak. So perhaps we want to look at the mode. However, whatever we decide to do, we need to be able to justify it based on our physical understanding of the experiment. And we need to uh, explain exactly what we've done with the data and why we've done it. And so that will then form the basis for later statistical testing of the data. But for now, that really just provides an overview of how we can begin to explore and visualise our data in SPSS.